Good evening. Welcome to Donkey Talk. Tonight we have Eric Do Not. Nope. I said it right. I like Do Way better, but it's Do Not on our TV show. And he's going to talk about a lot of really interesting things that's going on in the government and right here in the Black Hawk County. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Your camera's right over here. So when you go to talk, if you want to look in there, that way you're talking directly to the people. Okay. So I want to start. It's always about a journey yep. of what has made you a Democrat. So I want to start with your childhood. So um, my childhood has always been people surround, I mean, the people who have surrounded me have always been Republicans. Oh, my. So... Um, how I got to start um, being a Democrat is I was really enamored with Bill Clinton. And so, so was Bill I. Clinton was my candidate in 1992. Uh, and my family, you know, they were George H.W. George H. Bush Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were really into Republicanism and all of that kind of thing. But I, I really liked... Um, Bill Clinton's platform uh, during the 1992 election. So I was just gung-ho about Bill Clinton and was hoping that he would win. What about when you were younger, younger? I mean, did any of anything in your childhood influence you when you were younger? I mean, as far as parents' involvement in politics? or Well, they were always Republicans. So before George H.W. Bush, uh, they were real good Ronald Reagan supporters. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was my history or my, at least my background of how, how I knew, um, how I knew about the world in politics. Right. Was this Republican world mm -hmm. with uh, Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Mm -hmm. um, what age did you really start getting involved in it? Oh, 12. 12? Twelve when Bill Clinton was running. Wow! Cool. Yep. So I've been involved for that long. Um, you know, when I was in high school, so I was a little bit older. Um, in government class, uh, the teachers or the class would always want us to be getting involved uh, in learning about government, and that would be what would happen in the process of our government class. Right. And. Um, you know, kind of coming up with our own thoughts about politics and government. Right. And so that's how I got started getting connected with the various legislators. And so... Uh, what did your parents think of that, being Republican? <laughs> how did that go over? <laughs> um, we just kind of... That wasn't really a topic that you came up in the family it. conversation. <laughs> I mean, they knew that I was a Democrat. They knew I was a Bill Clinton supporter, but it was kind of like, okay, we're not going to talk about that. Mm -mm. We're going to leave that off to the side. He's young. He'll learn. <laughs> and I, well, I, I learned, but I never learned. I mean, I learned to go, to keep going toward the Democrats yeah. instead of turning around and going back toward the Republicans. And so, why was that? What, what really directed you towards more towards the Democrats? Well, because I felt like... Um, Democrats are friends of people with disabilities because we feel heard and seen and uh, included mm -hmm. and valued by Democrats. And that isn't so much of my experience all the time with Republicans. Now, I, I do have to say that when I first started being an advocate and an activist advocating with legislators, the Republicans, uh, um, there was one of the Republican legislators, he you know, I, I volunteered for him, and for a while I was doing some legislative volunteering for him, mm -hmm. and he was a Republican. And so um, he was my first foray into that field of mm -hmm. being an activist and advocate for people with disabilities. But I was the only one talking to him about disability needs, and, and with the Republican Party as a whole, it just didn't seem like that was one of their focuses mm -hmm. of people with disabilities being one of one of the things they focus on and it does for the democrats 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's neat. So you went to high school yep. and kept pushing forward. Then what happened after that? So I did do one year of college at the University of Iowa in liberal arts, but that didn't go so well as, as well as I planned. And so I, I came back home and then I uh, started working for that Republican legislator that I was talking mm -hmm. about and he gave me my first um, kind of in to everything state legislature politics, yeah. and politics and uh, working uh, with and for and being an advocate with the state legislators and I've been doing that ever since. Um, in a new direction. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what have you been doing? So, um, I know it's a lot of things. Yeah, I've been on um, six different commissions and committees throughout the city of Waterloo. Uh, the ADA commission, I was the chair of that. What's that? Uh, the ADA Compliance Commission is the Americans with Disabilities Act Compliance Commission oh, to neat. make sure everything in the city is disabled accessible and it meets ADA standards. Oh, that's great. And so when someone has a concern about how things are not uh, accessible for people with disabilities, they can come to that commission and say, your city property, your city building is not accessible as it needs to be and here's our concern and it can be addressed. Previously, I'd been on the Waterloo Commission on, on Human Rights mm -hmm. and that is a place where people with disabilities and other marginalized and um, minority communities uh, can have concerns about discrimination addressed. What was that called? Um, the Human Rights? The Human Rights Commission for the City of Waterloo. I see. Waterloo Commission on Human Rights. And that's a place where people with disabilities can have their concerns because also um, right. the disability community is a protected class when you consider discrim discrimination. And so they can have that addressed there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm also currently the chair of the Waterloo Housing Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. And that is a private organization or a private commission that um, increases ho housing opportunities. For disability? Uh, for everybody. For so, everybody. So, um, What's that called? I want to write that down. The Waterloo Housing Trust Fund. It, it might increase um, housing opportunities for people who are homeless and people with disabilities and other groups throughout other groups um, in Waterloo that have uh, housing needs that haven't been met. So we make sure that there's enough housing okay. or we work toward that there's enough housing. So if, if anybody watching this show would be interested in that, who would they, how would they contact? They or? would contact um, Intercog and ask for Brian, um, Brian Shin. What's Intercog? I see, I don't know. <laughs> so this is why I'm asking you so, because they don't know either, Intercog. So is that through the city? The That's, it starts through the city, but it's more like a regional. Yeah. It's like a Iowa, North, Iowa Northern Regional, um, something about Intercouncil. Okay. Um, Intercouncil so, of Governments. I. I so if they wanted to know about that, would they go to City Hall? Would they go over to the courthouse? How would they find out about it? They actually have the headquarters. Um, they can go right to the headquarters of Intercog. Okay. That's right on um, Park. It's right next to the, Mas the old Masonic Temple. So it's on Park Avenue? Yep. Park Avenue next to the Masonic Temple. Yep. Okay, well, that's good for now. Or no, so not the... Not next to the Masonic Temple. It would actually be on the other side of, I think it's on the other side of the YWCA. Okay. And that's next to the Masonic, Masonic Temple. Okay, okay. Yep. Well, that's good to know. So if anybody needs to contact them. Yep. Awesome. Well, give me a, yeah, I know you have 10 more things you've been on. <laughs> You're a busy man. Yeah. And so because I'm so busy, I've actually gained the moniker or the fun moniker of like Mr. Everywhere. And I like being Mr. Everywhere because it shows that people with disabilities can be involved in everything. Exactly. Um, and contribute in their own way. Right. 
as much as they're able. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I like being that symbolization of like, you know, people with disabilities don't have to be in their home shut away. Mm -hmm. They can be involved in their community. And so I like being Mr. Everywhere. That's awesome. So give me some more of the things that you're on that you have participated in. You talked to the senators and have you been to the Capitol? Yep. Okay. Um, and I've helped also train people. Uh, when um, I've gone to the Capitol, I've trained different groups of like, this is how you function and this is how you talk to the state legislators when you come down to the Capitol. There's a whole training I've led. Oh, I bet. About how to do that and do that successfully. Um, and I'm also on the um, the Mental Health Disability Services Board called, um, it's associated with County Social Services and, and uh, actually one of our supervisors is actually now the chair of it mm -hmm. or had been the chair of it, Craig White. Oh yeah, I know um, Craig. Yeah. He's he, been on the show. Yeah. And so he he had been the chair of this group that we're talking about, the uh, County Social Services Board, and it just makes sure that people get what they need in terms of funding uh, well, for their disability services. So how did they go, I mean, how do they get that funding? I mean, how does that work? So if somebody's watching the show and they want to know, you know, I have a child with mental illness, who do I go, who do I contact for help? They, they can actually go to our website, uh, with, so just kind of Google uh, County Social Services. County Social Services, okay. And I don't have all the numbers memorized, I'm That's sorry. That's all right. Um, and so, but all the contact information for people that would want to make contact with County Social Services would be on, Mental would illness. be available through their website. You know, I know that you're on the Central Committee meeting. Yep. And. I, I, re I represent uh, Precinct 4-2, so hi everyone from, <laughs> from there. Um, but I'd like you to make a, a list of these contacts yep. so that we could hand them out at the next Central Committee meeting so everybody could see how to resource that. That would be awesome if you do that. Yep. Okay, because that would be wonderful because, see, I'm the Chair for Affirmative Action and I'm just learning this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we had a piece of paper with it all on there, that would be awesome. Yeah. But what else would you like to share about what you've done? Well, um, right now for the, the legislative session just started. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're kind of getting, getting our sleep, sea legs through the first week. Right. And just, what was it, um, yesterday, I think the governor's budget just came out. So right now, that's really what I'm concentrating on to see how much money there is and what can be prioritized right. and what we can ask for because the money's there. Right. And so that, that's one of the things that's really important for the first week other than just introducing ourselves to the new legislators because there might have been special elections and yeah. people might have resigned or... Um, changes. Yeah, different changes. Um, so... Um, but for the state legislature, what we would really want to have to come up for pe people with disabilities is um, the care registry. We want that to come back up. And mm -hmm. that was uh, House File 692 last year. And it would have provided for more people to get funded, more of the home health care aids for people mm -hmm. with disabilities to get funded. Um, the home health care aides do help people with disabilities be more independent and accomplish more things. And, and maybe, what's that called again? Home um, health care? Home health care aides. And, and that's free to people? Yeah, I mean as long as you are, um, as long as you are covered by like Medicare, Medicaid and that kind of thing. So if you have government funding for your medical needs and stuff, mm -hmm. It's free for the individual. It doesn't have to pay for it. That's awesome. Yep. And so did that go through? Nope. Yeah, and I've heard so, a lot about stuff not so going we through. So we want all of that kind of thing to keep getting worked on in this 2022 session.
because this is the second year of the session. So anything that didn't happen last year can be reconsidered so that it happens this year before the end of the General Assembly. So um, it's pretty hard to get things passed through yeah. because yeah. of? Politics. Um, I mean, that seems... Are there more Republicans than Democrats? Yeah, there, there's more, more Republicans than Democrats. So for voting. Yeah, for, for voting. There's about 60, 61 Republicans and only four, uh, 40 Democrats in the Iowa House. Mm -hmm. And then on the Iowa State Senate side, there's like, it's 32 to 18. So 32 Republicans and 18 Democrats. We don't even have the Senate? I thought we had the Senate. No, we don't. Oh, wow. The Republicans have the trifecta. Oh, wow. And, it, you know, it's not helpful. That makes it really hard, doesn't it? Yep. And so um, there was a lot of things that we might have wanted for people with disabilities. I mean, one, one of the bills last year was making bathrooms more accessible right. with putting um, adult changing tables mm -hmm. in um, various bathrooms where they could fit and stuff. And I know that that got attached to other legislation <clears throat> uh, so that the Department of Transportation could get funded. Mm -hmm. But it was a standalone piece of legislation. And so the standalone piece died before it was attached. Oh, yeah. Or it was stopped before it was attached to the funding legislation. So there's, there's other ways to get things done. There's other ways to skin a cat. but So it's easier to put a big package together yeah, than to do a single one, in other words. Yep. Well, that makes sense. Um, but then you get a bigger chunk of money, right? Hopefully. Not necessarily. <laughs> You can always get unfunded mandates, which we won't go into. That's a little complicated. Yeah. Unfunded mandates. Yeah. You have to do it, but we won't give you the money so that you can do it. That's what an unfunded mandate is. But a mandate is a mandate. Yeah. You have to do it, but we won't give you the money or the funding that you would need to be able to do it successfully. But you still have to do it. Oh, wow. Is what an unfunded Has mandate. that happened before? Yep. Like, give me an example. Um, sure. I'm going to well set this up here. Uh, some of the funding with how we're setting up our uh, disability services, parts of that have been un unfunded mandates. You, you have to change from the county level funding to doing it this way or in the regions. and. And the way that you've changed, you have to change. But we won't give you the money so that you can do it successfully. So, yeah. So they mandate you to change it, but they're not going to help you. Yeah. So that... So how does it get done? It doesn't? People... Well, it does get done because people are innovative. Right. The people on the ground are innovative. Um, the people in our regions are... Like I said, in innovative. So, can, can you give me an example of it, of a situation of it? Well, we we're the one. The Black Hawk County um, came up with the idea of working together with other counties within our region, our bordering counties, to even have the idea of regions. So that that's oh, an that's good. yeah, that's an example of innovation. More the, power. Yeah. Unified is more powerful. Yep. Oh, that was a good idea. So were there any other committees on that you'd like to share that you've been on? Well, let's see. Um, I already talked about CSS and uh, Waterloo Commission for Human Rights, um, Waterloo Housing Trust Fund. Um, there, there was about six of them, and like I have to actually remember <laughs> all <laughs> of them. Which one is this one? Yeah, which one is this one? Um, I talked a little bit about ADA. So... Right, um, right off the top of your head. Right off the top of my head is I'm spacing off, but that's all right. Um, so, like for the workforce place, central. You know, you talk about that. Well, uh, you know, as it affects people with disabilities, um, we just want more people to be able to be helping people with disabilities. Right, and so we want to increase funding. 
that we would want to increase funding that would um, provide that more people would be available to help people with disabilities. And so that, that's our key for that. Oh, that's good. And, and the workforce, it, it's all in different settings. Mm -hmm. So it's not just um, people with disabilities, but it's in other it's in other settings that other people are concerned about as well. But um, our concern is that people with disabilities have the help that they need. And right now they don't have that oh, all the time. I know, I know. Um, do they have funding to support employers to hire people? Is there funding for that? Not, not right now. We're still working on that. Oh, that's something that you're going for. That yeah, that's awesome. something we're going for because mm -hmm. what what you were just talking about that that's part of what died in the bill last year, <laughs> and so if that bill had passed, then you would have had something. We would have had something. And so, well, we're coming to the end of the show, Eric. I want to thank you for coming on yep. and sharing all your knowledge. You're like a walking computer chip. Anything you want to know about government, you seem to know about it. Yeah. Um, is there any last things that you'd like to share on the show with any with uh, the public? Well, I would say you know s s stick with the Democrats because more often than not they're going to be the ones that are going to see you and uh, be for you and be advocating uh, for for folks. And I know as a person with dis disability, more often than not, I feel like I'm seen and heard and and my concerns are Democrats' concerns, and that's not necessarily true of our friends across no. the aisle. Well, thank you, Eric. Thanks for coming on the show. Yep. Hopefully I'll see you at the Central Committee meeting. You coming? Uh, depends on the weather now. The, oh, it's, it's, is it this Sunday? Yeah. It's this Sunday. So it, it, it always depends on the weather for me, Yeah. Uh, especially up until March. You know, during mm -hmm. the winter up through March, it depends on whether I can get out. So, you know, we're supposed to have a snowstorm uh, this weekend, so maybe, maybe not. We'll see how it um, goes. Yep. All right, well, thanks for participating. Come on anytime and share any more information, let me know. Yep. You can come on the show and share your information. And next what time I'll about. probably have some, you know, um, I'll probably have some things written down. Okay, all righty. Well, thank you yep. for watching Donkey Talk. I hope you join us again. Have a nice evening. Questioning our wants Spreading our wings Freedom we'll see Oh yeah